excuse me father am i yes. audible to you yes 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 oh. i can hear you oh, even i can hear you so the oh. audio is okay okay yes. thank you thank you Good afternoon to all. Absolutely. Today is the second day of the national webinar series on gender sensitization mm -hmm. and women empowerment, organized by Women's Cell in collaboration with the IQAC Dev Mother College, Kurvalangyad. Today's talk will be delivered by Reverend Father Dr. Davis Panadan, CMI. He holds PhD in law. At the National Law School of India University, Bangalore. He holds LLM from the same institution and a licentiate in Oriental Canon Law from Dharmaram Vidya Shetram, Bangalore and 
Pontifical Oriental Institute, Rome. He is an author of 11 books and 37 articles. Since 2007, he is the lecturer of civil and canon law at Dharmaram Vidya Shetram and also serves as the administrator and director of research center of Dharmaram Vidya Shetram. He is actively involved in human rights, environmental protection program, and social action program of Jananiti. He is honored with Kempagauda Award for a Social Worker by Brugat Bangalore Mahanagara Palik in 2011. He is the founder chairman and principal of Blessed Chavara School, Bangalore. At present, he is the principal of Christ Academy Institute of Law, Bangalore and director of Christ Public School, Basavanagar. The topic which will be delivered by him is on protection of women under law. Mm. Safety and security of women and children in the country is an utmost priority for the government. The Ministry of Women and Child Development has been administering various special laws related to women, such as the protection of women from Domestic Violence Act, Dowry Prohibition Act, and some others. Mm -hmm. This is indeed a privilege for each one of us to get some factual information from an esteemed person like Father Dr. Davis Panadan during this pandemic crisis. With these few words, on behalf of the women's cell, in collaboration with the IQSC, Belmada College, Kurvalangyad, I welcome you, Father, to handle the session. Thank you so much, Dr. Santra, for welcoming me. And good afternoon to all, all of you. Uh, am I audible to you all? Yes. Okay. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. One minute, I'll show my... Can you see my PPT? Yes, Father. Dear friends, uh, let me start uh, with an, uh, one of my experience. After my studies, I was uh, doing an internship program at one of the NGO in Bangalore. As a part of the program of the NGO, uh, I don't want to mention the name of the NGO, 
because all these are secret. And uh, uh, the the main uh, task of these NGOs are uh, rescuing and rehabilitating the bonded laborers and prostitutes. Maybe uh, it was a wonderful chance for me when I uh, tried to take uh, permission from Father Rector from Dharma Ram. Uh, the former rector asked me, uh, Father Davis, will you come back uh, uh, with your life? Then I said, oh, of course, I will come back. So, uh, as a part of their program and then testing operation in uh, uh, Mumbai Red Street to rescue 37 uh, uh, prostitutes, young child prostitutes from the Red Street, that was the task. Maybe with the help of uh, uh, DC from Mumbai, we maybe narrowly escaped that farm. And maybe that may be a chance to open my mind. Uh, maybe can you imagine more than 1,18,000 young child prostitutes are there below the age of 15. Below the age of 15. Especially many from Bangladesh, Nepal and different parts of India are their young children with uh, uh, some kind of hormones injected there. Uh, they feel like a, uh, a, a big lady like, but their actual age is below 15. Uh, maybe that was an eye opener for me uh, in this field uh, to explain to you, discuss with you what are the protections available under the law in the country. Let me start with the quote from Swami Vivekananda. Just as a bird cannot fly with one wing only, a nation cannot march forward if the women are left behind. That shall be a, a motivating uh, dictum for all of us in this seminar. Mm -hmm. Etymologically, the word woman mean half of man. Maybe biblically, if you go, uh, we'll get a more explanation from that. Half of man. Throughout the history, the central role of women in society has ensured the stability, progress, and long-term development of uh, nations. Globally, uh, women comprise 43% of the world's agricultural labor force, rising to 70% in some of the countries, uh, including India. Rural uh, women play a key role in supporting their households and communities, in achieving food and nutrition secur security, generating income, and improving rural livelihoods and overall well-being. Uh, this uh, uh, said by UN Women Watch organization. And uh, uh, the one question in front of you is paying the reward of marriage. And the another question, are you aware about your constitutional rights? Let us uh, try to see some of the constitutional rights which are available to all, uh, to all of us. And working still uh, deprived their basic rights, freedom. And why keep quiet against injustice? If we uh, go to Bible also, we can see maybe the most prominent value taught by Jesus Christ in the Sermon of the Mount is justice. Because there are uh, eight values pronounced by Jesus Christ, but two values. Actually, there are only seven values. But justice is repeated. That means the most prominent values in the life of Jesus Christ is also justice. So, an institution, Catholic institution like uh, Devamada College shall promote this idea to be more practical. Because that's ideal of uh, idea of an ideal of uh, uh, Jesus Christ also. Constitutional provisions for women. Gender equality 
in other way it is known as sexual equality is the state of equal ease of access to resources and opportunities two things access to resources and opportunities regardless of gender including economic participation and decision making and the state of valuing different behaviors aspirations and needs equally regardless of gender the principle of gender equality is enshrined in the indian constitution in its preamble uh, there may be key to open the indian constitution that is preamble of fundamental rights and fundamental duties and directory principles and uh, as per the the verdicts from the supreme court fundamental rights and direct principles are uh, at equal foot the constitution not only grants equality to women but also empowers the state to adopt measures of positive discrimination in favor of women and within the framework of a de democratic polity our laws development policies plans and programs have aimed at women's advancement in different uh, spheres especially equality what is maybe equality maybe justice krishnaya definition will be good uh, equal should be treated equally and unequal should be treated unequally you shall all shall be very clear equal shall be treated equally and unequal shall be treated equally that is a, the basic premise of reservation reservation to women and reservation to scheduled caste and scheduled tribe india has also ratified various international conventions and uh, human rights instruments uh, committing to secure equal rights of women and key among them is the ratification of covenant on elimination of all forms of discrimination against uh, uh, women uh, in 1993 uh, see though it is not the short form it is not us and constitutional privileges article 14 there is one of the fundamental rights equality before law for uh, women that's why that equal should be treated equally and unequal should be treated unequally and mentally challenged they are not equal that's why some special privileges are for them a state not to be discriminate against any citizens on grounds only of religion race caste sex place of birth or any of them article 15 1 the state to make any special provisions in favor of women and children article 153 and article 16 says equality of opportunity for all citizens in matters relating to employment so employment there cannot be any uh, uh, an equality or appointment of to any office under the state under the state that is very focused under the state so state institution cannot so for one of the examples i remember a case to the supreme court uh, the air hostess the air india circular says that no uh, the pregnant lady cannot be the air hostess she has to resign that case came to the supreme court and then the rule made by air india that is one of the, uh, uh, the, the public form of uh, central government is nullified unconstitutional the state to direct its policy towards securing for men and women equally the right to an adequate means of livelihood article 39a an equal pay for equal work for both men and women article 39d that all comes under directive principles to promote justice on the basis of equal opportunity and to provide free legal aid by suitable legislations or scheme or any other way to ensure that opportunities for secure justice are not denied to any citizen by reason of economic or other disabilities article 39a again under direct uh, principles of state policy and article 42 the state to make provisions for securing just and humane conditions of work and for maternity relief and article 46 the state to promote with the special care the educational and economic interest of the weaker sections of the people 
and to protect them from social injustice and all forms of exploitation. Again, under Directive of State Principles, the state to raise the level of nutrition and the standard of living of its people, especially women are most affected by this case of nutrition, no? because mother always gives to the children. No? To promote harmony and spirit of common brotherhood amongst all the people of India and to renounce practices derogatory to the dignity of women. Article 51, this under fundamental duties. Not less than one third, that including scheduled caste and scheduled tribe, of the total number of the seats to be filled by direct election in every panchayat to be reserved for women. And such seat to be allotted by rotation to different constituencies in the panchayat. Suppose today, one of the uh, village ward of Pala may be uh, reserved for women. This term, next term, another ward will be reserved for uh, women. Not less than one third of total number of offices of chairpersons in the panchayats at each level to be reserved for women. Each level means no village panchayat, block panchayat, and district panchayat. Okay. And not less than one third of uh, total number of the seats to be filled by direct election in every municipality to reserve for women and such seats to be allotted by rotation to different constituencies in a municipality. So, uh, village panchayat and municipal corporation or corporation also is uh, uh, applicable. Reservation of offices of chairpersons in municipalities for the scheduled caste, the scheduled tribes and women in such manner as legislation of a state may be by law provide. Article 3T4. And special initi initiatives for women in the country. A National Commission for Women. In January 1992, the government uh, set up this statutory body with a specific mandate to study and monitor all matters relating to the constitutional and legal safeguards provided for women, review the existing legislation to suggest amendments wherever necessary. Again, it's a contribution from uh, late Rajiv Gandhi, former Prime Minister. Again, this reservation for women in local self-government, again, his contribution to the country. The 73rd Constitutional Amendment passed in 1992 by Parliament and show one third of the total seats of women in all elected offices in local bodies, whether in rural areas or urban areas. And National Plan of Action for the Girl Child, again, the contribution from Rajiv. The plan of action is to ensure survival, protection and development of the girl child with the ultimate objective of building up a better future for the girl child. A national policy for the empowerment of women in 2001, the Department of Women and Child Development in the Ministry of Human Resources Development has prepared a national policy for the empowerment of women in the year 2001. The goal of this policy is to bring about the advancement, development and empowerment of uh, women. To uphold constitutional mandate, the state has enacted various legislative measures. This all our constitution is a policy brought in driven to the state uh, to uh, enact laws abiding constitutional principles intended to ensure equal rights to counter social discrimination and various forms of violence and atrocities and to provide support services equally, especially to working women. Uh, I explain one more time. And uh, the crimes identified under Indian Penal Code IPC, for example, rape, Section 376 and kidnapping and abduction for different purposes. Abduction means for the purpose of marriage. Kidnapping, usually for the money and maybe some other uh, valuable things. And uh, homicide for dowry, dowry deaths or their attempts. Section 302, uh, 304B. And sexual harassment. 509 IPC. 
the crimes identified under special laws although all laws are not gender specific the provisions of law affecting women significantly have been reviewed periodically and amendments carried out to keep pace with the emerging requirements some acts which are special provisions to safeguard women and their interests are for example the special marriage act 1954 the hindu succession act 1956 recently also you have heard of the supreme court judgments uh, immoral traffic prevention act 1956 the maternity benefit act 1961 dowry provision act 1969 the equal remuneration act 1976 indecent representation of women prohibition act 1986 the protection of women from domestic violence act 2005 and I explain uh, a little bit of on every act dowry prohibition act 1961 the purpose of this act is to prevent the giving or taking a dowry it is not only penalizes this act but also makes the act of demanding dowry an offense may be most affected state in the country may be in kerala you know that dowry now we use another word no the gift by the family to a uh, bride groom not bride sometime bride or bride groom okay the object of this act is to prohibit the evil practice of giving and taking dowry it's a law which makes the practice punishable and at the same time ensures that any dowry if given does ensure for the benefit of the wife will go a long way to educating public opinion and to the eradication of this evil and it takes care to exclude presence in the form of clothes uh, we used to give ornaments now maybe most probably these ornaments etc which are customary at marriages provided the value thereof does not exceed 2000 even 2000 may not be sufficient to buy a saree now nowadays no uh, the dowry prohibition act 1961 was amended by the dowry prohibition amendment act 1984 demanding dowry is also an offense under this uh, amendment when a person demands directly or indirectly any dowry from parents guardians or relatives of a bride or a bride groom is liable to punish with the minimum imprisonment of 6 months to maybe 45 days minimum which may be excess to 2 years and fine that's maximum so uh, these are the some of the uh, law connecting to dowry protection of women from domestic violence act 2005 It is an act of the Parliament of India enacted to protect women from domestic violence. Maybe uh, the, the 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 now the the home house is also open to uh, a legal uh, realm. Okay. The national earlier it was not there. Now it may be marital rape. India is not. Uh, Uh, in actual law, such a law, but anyway, Western countries know even the uh, marital rape also comes under because even the bedrooms comes under the surveillance of the law. The National Family Health Survey, released by the Union Health Ministry, reported that every third woman in India since the age of 15 faces domestic violence of some form. It also reported that. 31% of the married women have faced physical sexual or emotional violence by their spouses maybe mostly in our context emotional violence the major issue is that out of these hardly 10% actually reported this violence first time in india indian law a definition of domestic violence uh, came through this act with this definition being broad and including not only physical violence but also other forms of violence such as emotional of course is happening i would say maybe every family verbal every family sexual 
Not that much, but it happens. And economic abuse, mostly. The women's right to reside in the matrimonial or shared household, whether or not she has any title or rights in the household. She may not have a title deed on the property, but no, uh, women has the right to reside in the matrimonial uh, home or shared household. Okay? Women in liable in relationship, especially this is not a culture of Kerala. The better point is, it is we can see uh, women in life, in relationship, covered under this uh, act, especially uh, from, by the verdict from the Supreme Court in the case of D. Velusami versus D. Patachi Amal. That case, the Supreme Court said, no, even live relationships are under uh, this, uh, this act. The principle justice to the cause is equivalent to the salt of ocean uh, should be kept in mind. The Maternity Benefit Amendment Act 2017. The amended act also falls in line with international best practices such as the Maternity Protection Convention 2000. The fundamental purpose for providing maternity benefits is to preserve the self-respect for mother illness, protect the health of a woman, complete safety of the child, preserve the self-respect for mother illness, protect the health of women, and complete safety to the, of the child is very uh, much paramount uh, to this act. Increase the duration of paid maternity leave available for women employees to 26 weeks. Early it was 12 weeks. Now, as per law, it is 26 weeks. However, for those women who are expecting after having two children, the duration of the leave remains unaltered at 12 weeks. In a way, it is discouraging uh, more children. Okay. The paid maternity leave can be availed eight weeks before the expected date of delivery and uh, balances afterwards. Extended the benefits applicable to the adoptive and commissioning mothers and provides that women who adopts a child will be given 12 weeks of maternity leave from the date of adoption. Sometimes you know, a, a woman, a family maybe adopts a child. Uh, that mother, adoptive mother will get 12 weeks of maternity leave. Enabling provision related to work from home. That provision is also there. IT companies, what other IT companies do these uh, practices. And crash facility for every establishment employing 50 or more employees, especially of course a college. The mother college also, I think, maybe more than 50 employees would be there. Uh, women employees. The women employees should be permitted to visit the uh, visit the facilities four times during the day if a crush is attached to the institutions. Compulsory for the employees to educate women about the maternity benefits available to them at the time of their appointment. Now even students are also uh, educated now because of the women's cell of their mother college. The sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention, prohibition and redressal act 2013. This is uh, based on Vishaga case. Vishaga versus state of Rajasthan. A uh, government employee, uh, Ruma Devi was main task of that lady was as a profession of the government profession is now to uh, prohibit child marriage. That was her task. And uh, especially uh, a person from Gujar community uh, raped her. And that case was taken to the Supreme Court of India. And uh, maybe based on the Vishaga case, now the sexual harassment of women at workplace. All the institutions should have the, uh, the, the cell. Sexual harassment uh, 
of women uh, prohibiting sale shall be there. They have very colleges, they have institutions. The objective to provide protection against sexual harassment of women at workplace, the, uh, the prevention and the redressal of complaints of sexual harassment and for matter connected therewith or incident as there too. The Act defines sexual harassment as unwelcome acts or behavior, whether directly or by implications, even implications, namely physical contact and uh, even advances or demand or request for sexual favors, making sexually colored remarks, showing uh, pornography and other unwelcome physical verbal or non-verbal contact of sexual nature. Just see the, the, uh, the definition, how wide it is. Any act of unwelcome and sexual nature shall be considered as sexual harassment. It envisages, envisages the setting up of internal, internal complaint committee, you know, all the institutions at every office of the organization or institution having more than 10 employees to hear and address complaints pertaining to sexual harassment. The act lays down certain duties of the employer and district officer creating awareness on sexual harassment at workplace and sensitize the employees. Non-complaints non of the provisions of the act by the employer may result in fine which may be extended to 15,000 rupees and can also uh, lead to cancellation of his license or withdrawal, permission from the uh, uh, maybe renewal of the college or extension of uh, the permission of the college everything or non-renewal or approval or cancellation of the registration. And uh, another one is Equal Remuneration Act is of 1976. The duty of employer to pay equal remuneration to men and women workers for the same work, the seats for the same work or work of a similar nature. Uh, in 1982, People's Union Democratic Republic versus Union of India, uh, Justice Bhagavati, uh, uh, dealing with these cases, you know, the women was paid 7 rupees per day, no, that time, okay, 1982. And men uh, was paid 9.25 rupees. Mm -hmm. So he said, no, authorities need to make, sh make sure that the men and women both are paid at par to each other for similar amount of work. No discrimination to be made while recruiting men and women workers. And power of appropriate government to appoint authorities for hearing and deciding claims and complaints. A central advisory committee has been set up at the center under the act to advise the government on providing increasing employment opportunities for women and generally reviewing the steps taken for effective uh, implementation of the Act. Legal right, every woman must be aware. Okay. No hospital, whether public or private, can reject or deny any case of medical examination of a rape victim. Next one. Under all circumstances, the identity and name of a raped victim, raped victim must be protected in either form. Uh, women cannot be called to police station for interrogation under Section 160 of CRPC, Criminal Procedure Code of India. A zero FIR, you know what do you mean by FIR? First information report, you have seen the movie also. Uh, usually the FIR shall be filed, it's a territorial jurisdiction. A crime took place in a particular police station, maybe Ramapuram police station. Then you have to file FIR in that police station, the territory of that police station. But for women, a special privilege is there, a zero FIR can be filed in any police station respective area. Suppose I am so familiar with the, uh, one circle inspector of an, another police station now, I can file there. That is called zero FIR. And FIR can be filed online as well. Do not go to the police station. 
no arrest of women after sunset and before sunrise an arrest can be made by a female police constable only except in exceptional circumstances and women have the right to file an fir no matter when the incident happened suppose rape took place maybe years back now i can file and free legal aid to women while lodging an fir suppose i want the assistance of the advocates i get a free legal aid i need not pay and right to privacy while recording the statement the police officer shall not reveal suppose if he, some people comes for the uh, witness as witnesses then uh, the privacy shall be kept intact so uh, uh, with this i wanted to finish by the uh, chromosome x chromosome y chromosome you know men is not above women and women is not above men and men and women shall be equal so this will be a short presentation i know if i deal with uh, each and every act it will take maybe the days so i i explain all the provisions of women and law in nutshell and now it's a time for uh, question answer maybe that may be good to uh, to know your queries and then i may be able to answer to your questions thank you father it was a wonderful presentation now a few questions have been asked this question is from rinu benny do you think that our present law is enough to handle and protect women issues uh, rinu uh, thank you for your questions maybe india is a country where we have the best laws with regard to women and law but we are uh, seeing the failures in the implementation part implementation suppose now if you are going to the police station now how they uh, deal with us the women that's a problem the law is the present law in the country especially constitutional provisions as well as other provisions in the uh, enactments or no i would say perfect some more other loopholes you may see but implementation part is very much very much weak that's a problem thank you father next question is from dr tina sebastian of our college if an institution does not allow the women employee to take paid maternity leave stating technical grounds how should the employee move legally is it a human right violation issue too uh, uh dr tina thank you so much for your questions no you have different options Mm. Uh, first anyway uh, you have to write to your that is a redressal mechanism comes you have to uh, write to your uh, principal uh, as per law these are the uh, provisions ensured in the law and uh, father why you are not giving me the paid leave the first thing you can do that one and uh, the other uh, answer is may not be satisfactory from the principal no there may be a manager of course you can write to them you may not uh, get the the uh, your right to be implemented then of course you have different options so human rights violation you can go to a women's commission in the state or human rights commission you can go to them and if nothing happen even after the complaints you can approach even to high court of the high court of kerala because this is a constitutional rights when human rights are violated you can approach high court or supreme court directly but anyway uh, uh, you have to follow the redressal mechanism which are available otherwise the court will ask you whether you go you complain to your principal uh, principal is aware of this or manager is aware of this one? and did you complain to uh, women commission 
And did he complain to later maybe climatized conditions in the state? Then of course, all these places, I was denied this right. So I am coming to the Honorable Court of Kerala, High Court of Kerala. Are you clear? Even we have to conscientize the management, including me. I am the principal of a law college, Bangalore. So now this is a time to management to uh, maybe to prepare manual, the handbook given to the teachers. High time. Yes, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Now the question is from Agustin Tangala. There are two questions. First question. Laws are there as provision of protection. However, how do you think we can bring the awareness of these rights as we learn other subject matter? Because all these constitutional rights and all these provisions shall be now, uh, especially, you know, I have seen in Bangalore, I have seen uh, all the, uh, the law colleges, of course, they have to study the law, the engineering colleges, other professional courses also. There is a, a paper, a law paper, and it's now UGC is uh, making it a mandatory to all the education institutions, even from the school. They have to teach these kind of provisions. You know? That's why we have beautiful uh, laws we, uh, in the country. But uh, many are not aware of this one. And uh, maybe uh, many of you, many of us, we consider that you know, these are the, the role of the advocates to study the law, not out. But then slowly, slowly, there shall be a curriculum to be practiced and taught in the education institutions, uh, consider the constitutional provisions of the country, especially the constitution. Uh, maybe in connection time today, maybe uh, India, when uh, we enacted the, the constitution, we say that we the people of India. We the people of India. But uh, that is a, maybe we are, we'll have a kind of feeling that we all are together making that constitution. But in the world, the South African constitution under the leadership of Nelson Mandela was mostly discussed by the common people of the country. Uh, uh, that was maybe most discussed deliberated constitution by the common people of the country is South African. Because before today, the parliament is going to uh, 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 deliberate on one section. That will be given to the, uh, given through the radio, newspaper, and you know, especially tea shops. Tea shops are so familiar in Kerala now. This is the way all the countries, the tea shops are there. So the tea shop, these are the discussions. And uh, so special officers are appointed, and these officers will take uh, the recommendations from the even common people from the tea shops and give to the parliament. So most discussed deliberated constitution in the world is South African. But we didn't have that kind of, okay, uh, even though we have used the term, even, we the people of India, uh, many, uh, we are not there now. Now we have uh, many people. And now but what is, shall be implemented? The school education, college education shall be, have this kind of curriculum. What is the second question, Sandra? Uh, for the second question is, many of the women are ignorant of laws and rights. It's the crux of the issue. What platform is needed for vast awareness? Uh, I would say this kind of one-day program is not sufficient. These uh, uh, shall be the part of academics. Any even degree courses, professional courses, and all the courses. And that shall be mandatory. And one paper, that uh, uh, law paper shall be uh, compulsory for all, like uh, any other subjects. Dr. Sandra, can you next questions? Okay, Father, next question is from Sandra Sabo. Missing women concept by economist Amritya Sen is still important in country like India. The birth number of women is higher than men, but towards the number were decreasing. Why is it still happening? Even these much laws are supporting the women and children. Uh, that's why I told in the beginning, you know, this uh, 
the problem in the implementation part. So I would say even not only women, when uh, one brother from Dharmaram, uh, 2007, I know, I, you know, uh, missed from Dharmaram College, you know, he was one of the brother, the theology brother. And even, uh, even we say the Christ University and we all have a, so much influence in the, uh, maybe in Bangalore and place Karnataka. And we could not find that brother till today. And then when we complained, okay, many places that the complaint of missing women are, the parents are afraid to complain. Uh, because now, suppose that, that child, maybe girl child comes back, what will be the future of the child? You know? So many times, the parents wanted to uh, suppress all these things in the family. <laughs> the other way, it will happen, no? even if we complain to the police office, uh, the police station, no? they will not take much uh, interest to uh, investigate on it. So, uh, uh, again, I say implementation party is a failure. Next question is from Dr. Anuraj TJ. Why the conviction rate is too low? Uh, Dr. Anuraj, mm. the conviction rate, especially. Uh, Always, we shall not give the blame to the, to the court. We shall not give the blame because, you know, the prosecution. Prosecution is very important in the criminal trial. Uh, that, you know, prosecution, public prosecutor or assistant public prosecutor, special public prosecutor. And uh, nowadays, this, I have seen that they are very efficiently, they are doing it. But uh, earlier, you know, this appointed by the government, what interest they have? The government is paying the, the fee, whether uh, they are not producing the proper uh, evidence before the court, they'll get it, uh, their salary. And one way maybe they may get uh, some kind of even uh, amount of money from the uh, the, uh, the accused side also sometime. But what will happen? The accused will employ uh, the best advocate. And uh, uh, the prosecution is not, prosecution is because the institute burden of proof is on the prosecution. So what are the, the uh, main evidences shall be brought by the prosecution to the court. And he will be negligent sometime, maybe because of ignorance sometime, maybe because of the, maybe a, uh, a allurement through the money as someone. Well. And then on one side, a best advocate will be employed by the accused. And sometime, you know, I may be aware, as a judge, I may be aware, maybe this person has done the crime, but no, there are no evidences. Without the evidences, I cannot convict. Acquit. And uh, if the, what is the role of the, the uh, uh, accused lawyer no? to create a doubt whether he has done it or not? And doubt in favor of accused, not for the victim. So the the, the uh, criminal uh, machinery, especially the advocate, shall be so vigilant. And we, when we teach the professional ethics, we teach them all these kind of things. Now I am preparing for the professional ethics. I start. Uh, I have to start the professional ethics class from tomorrow onwards. Okay. Thank you. Father, next question is from Vincy Matthew. In case of maternity benefits denial or sexual harassment in workplace, is there any time limit or duration within which we have to put up the complaint? Sexual harassment at any time you can. Maternity, you have to approach because no maternity benefit is denied. You have to approach a, a legal time. There is a, a period of limitation is there now. Like uh, maternity cases, if you are not aware because now the principal is not granting the leave. As soon as you get, and there will be a redressal mechanism, and then you have to start that uh, 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 redressal mechanism, even to uh, manager or a women's commission or human rights commission, or then you have to go to the court. But the other uh, rape or uh, sexual harassment, at any time, you can file. No limitation period for sexual harassment and rape. Thank you, Father. Next is... Next question is from Anila Marin Surgeon. It takes nearly years to punish the culprit. 
can we move a bit faster in these kind of scenarios uh we have a special provisions for fast track court we have that uh, court uh, system is there you know regular courts are very as you said no very late because no the n number of cases are in the court n number of the cases and uh, uh, that is one thing the second thing always i have seen the advocates are asking for the uh, uh, extension postponing the cases that's another thing the other way uh, we have the provision for fast track court and especially that uh, the uh, film actress case also fast track and now the the judge is asking for three more months from the supreme court special permission from the supreme court because of the corona fast track court there is a time limitation is there it finished by like you know one and a half years before but other courts you know it takes a long time long way to go uh, not only judges i i would say criminal justice system uh, as a whole is uh, to be uh, accused of these kind of things next question is from parvati sanish sir as you said there are so many laws to protect women but the rate of rapes and violence are increasing day by day does this indicate that we should introduce no new laws no parvati this not a, to making the laws how many laws we have the best laws but uh, you know this is the beauty of the the government state to protect the life of the citizens and when they fail when they fail we have to show in the coming elections now it's a primary duty of the state to protect the lives of the people citizen and especially to protect so uh, i would say my opinion is uh, no need of making uh, a number of uh, laws the laws which we have is make it efficient uh, to be implemented that is we want a, a government uh, with the determination the determination next question is from anvin ajaya do you think that the laws established for the protection of women are sometimes being manipulated by some for their own personal interests yeah sure so manipulations are there money manipulations positions even for fame it's happening uh, money that's a uh, i would say uh, the law is a i would say law is a mimics of market mimics of market market not like not a chanda sthalam not take that one market the law even decided by the the money sometime mm. next question one more question is there if a woman got sexually exploited by her close friend can she move legally without involving media that is without the knowledge of anyone around her yeah of course many cases especially the uh, uh, immediate relations are misusing suppose we are seeing the case of the father he is misusing uh, his daughter many are afraid to tell even some of the mothers are also aware but they are not telling because no what if the status is very important for her person and uh, even even the trial system trial system this kind of cases even in, we call it a in camera procedure in camera procedure means only judges and advocates and even sometime witnesses no other people are allowed in the court room and even even the name shall not be revealed all these are there so the provisions are there okay father thank you father due to time constraints okay <laughs> okay thank you father now i invite ms rudhi s nayar to propose the vote of thanks am i audible ma'am yes yes you are honorable dignitaries distinguished guests respected principal sir and dear participants on behalf of iqsc and women's forum 
Devmata College, I feel immense pleasure to take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks to an eminent personality, Father Dr. Davis Panadan, CMI, Principal Christ Academy Institute for Law, Bangalore, who spared the time from his busy schedule to grace this webinar with his extremely relevant address on protection of women under law. Thank you, Father. I take I take this opportunity to specially express my deep regards and gratitude to Dr. Juju K. Joseph, Principal Devamada College for always encouraging us and providing opportunities for organizing such events. Thank you, sir. My deep sense of appreciation and gratitude to all the participants who choose to be live with us and attend the webinar with great enthusiasm and made it a successful event. Thank you for them. My sincere gratitude also goes to the organizing community for taking opinions that really matters in today's age and time. Once again, I thank all of you for being with us. Have a great afternoon and a wonderful day. Thank you. So one word of uh, appreciation and uh, thanking, uh, Shudhi. Thank you so much for your uh, kind words and uh, uh, Dr. Sandra for maybe as a uh, moderator and uh, uh, Dr. Anpol, this Anpol was giving me a chance to present it and then principal uh, and management, uh, let me express my sincere gratitude. And one thing I, I would say, I want to tell you, uh, you know, uh, Christ Academy Institute of Law, where we having uh, the judicial service training program as a part of curriculum. This is the only institution in the country where judicial service training program is a part of curriculum for BLLB, BBLLB, Big Man and B students. So, uh, my dream is now, in the days to come, the justice shall be imparted to the, the motivated students of our, our college to be, because now, after finishing their five-year LLB program, they'll be eligible to write uh, uh, a judge's post of the district judiciary. If they are in the judiciary uh, uh, at the age of 22, they, they surely they'll come to the High Court and Supreme Court of the country. And if they, uh, the justice conscience is there in the each and every student, they can be the best judges and they can impart the justice to the country, especially in the case of women. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father. Thank you, all of you. Tomorrow's session will be at 3 p.m. on the topic Women's Safety by Sri Yus Rajat, CI of Police, Pambadi Kote. Thank you. The feedback form, feedback link is uh, given in the chat box. Please fill it up so as to get the e-certificate. Thank you.